thing for today is uh, uncomfortable, uncomfortable truths. truths. Yes. Uh, this is Bo and Josh, uh, and they're going to get started with, uh, I guess, just a 30-minute hello, talk about the cavalry for a bit, and then we're going to get to more open discussion, right? Yeah. Cool. All right, thanks. So um, who was in here for at least part of the day yesterday? OK. And who is new to the track today, just coming in? OK, good. So yesterday, uh, it, was, it was a very one-to-many kind of interaction. We were standing up here uh, talking and bringing other folks on stage um, to go through some of the things that they care about, that they've seen, their wants, needs, desires, fears, hopes, dreams. Um, today, uh, we're going to be a lot more collaborative. Um, so uh, yesterday, just to recap, we started out uh, and just did an overview of I Am The Cavalry. So if you're not familiar with I Am The Cavalry, we're a grassroots initiative that started three years ago here uh, on August 1st. So we're, we're two days past our third birthday. Um, and the idea was that uh, as we looked around the InfoSec community, we saw a lot of the types of failures that we typically have, servers crashing, uh, laptops not coming up when they're supposed to, such as our AV fail over here, um, mobile phones getting malware on them, all of these types of things. Uh, we really hadn't seen a consequential failure. We hadn't seen loss of life. We hadn't seen a uh, massive scale where people start, started to distrust the technology that underlied some of these societal systems. Um, but as we're connecting software to more and more of the things around us, um, the consequences of those failures will increase. So it won't be as much about credit card data, uh, PII, uh, and it will be a lot more about loss of life, loss of trust. And as we started looking around and, and talking to government people, corporate folks, uh, others who might be looking at um, these types of problem spaces so that we could fix them, we found that there really weren't, uh, there wasn't anybody in charge, right? We got as, as high and deep as we could and found that we were the adults in the room and that both scared the hell out of us and made us empowered to be able to take action and to, be, uh, to decide our own fate. So uh, that's how the name came about. We said if the cavalry isn't coming, then the responsibility falls to us. Uh, and so I am the cavalry is all of us saying, I will be part of the solution. Uh, I will not go quietly into that, into that night. Um, so uh, that was our introduction yesterday, just basically um, briefing the people who haven't yet heard about us. Uh, then we started talking about um, uh, Hacker Heroes. We had Karen Elizari do a great talk. If you didn't get to see it yesterday, uh, it's recorded and it'll be posted uh, in two or three weeks. Um, kind of calling out all of the protectors in the crowd, the people who want to solve hard problems because they know that it's a, a global good. Um, we had a panel where we tried to talk through some of the hard problems that we see every day as well as the things that we've done to overcome them, right? Um, to show the progression of things over the past five years, where five years ago, if we got a bunch of us together in a room, we know what would happen. We would get drunk and talk about the problems and admire them. Um, today, we've started talking about what the solutions might be so that we can solve them and move towards something better uh, and uh, work on raising the water line for everybody. Um, in the afternoon, we came back and we heard from Jen Ellis and Amanda Craig uh, about what's going on in public policy in cyber safety. Uh, and they went through a lot of different pieces of legislation, of regulation, state, federal, uh, international, um, talking about how, uh, whether we want to or not, Cybersecurity is now a part of the uh, public policy zeitgeist, and we can't ignore it anymore. Um, <clears throat> as well as talk about some of the successes we've had with the MCA exemptions for security research in medical devices and voting machines uh, and in cars, uh, in uh, getting a Michigan car hacking bill fixed. So where it was terrible before, it's now much, much better because of this community. Right? sticking their hand up and saying, wait a minute, something's wrong here, and then going and engaging in a positive, produ productive manner with those lawmakers. Um, then we moved on to uh, healthcare cyber safety panel, our discussion. And it was magical. Was, it was magical. It was 
Josh says. <clears throat> so that was uh, a lot about uh, what's going on in the industry, some trends, uh, looking back three to five years and then coming to today, what's happening and then projecting out another year or so and see what's going to happen. And we had four really, really good talks uh, that were just five minute lightning talks from different perspectives. We had a US regulator, the US FDA, Suzanne Schwartz, talking about how uh, they've been working to bring the entire community together in healthcare. So not just medical device makers, HDOs, healthcare delivery organizations, and the government, but bringing in security researchers as a part of a healthy ecosystem uh, and how important we are to them. We had uh, Colin Morgan from Johnson & Johnson give a very good talk about, um, uh, and you, you've got to go see it if you, if you didn't see it yesterday. Uh, we had a video of his kid saying that his dad is a superhero because he works on uh, these things that help people and he keeps the bad guys from hurting them with the medicine machines. Medicine machines. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Uh, he also told a personal story about the, uh, the path from Johnson & Johnson's perspective and how they've gone from what's security in medical devices to a very clueful organization that has a lot of good things coming. Uh, and has done a lot of things already. Uh, we then heard from Jay Radcliffe, a security researcher, talking about the maturity of the entire ecosystem uh, and some of the baby steps that he's seen in the past five years, where we've come, and how not only have uh, the companies matured and gotten better about responding to us, uh, also the FDA and ICS CERT and other government agencies have got better, gotten better about dealing with security research, security researchers. Uh, but the researchers themselves have also stepped up and they've been more willing to work collaboratively rather than just dropping O'Day at Black Hat. And it's not because any one group stood up, it's because all of them collectively started stand, standing up and going around in a virtuous circle. Mm -hmm. uh, then we had Kwadi, who is here, uh, give a talk from a physician's perspective and he basically said, look guys, this isn't about you, this isn't about manufacturers, it's not about the FDA, it's about the patients. Patient safety is the number one concern. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after that talk, we had a car talk, which I wasn't here for, because I had to run upstairs. Right. So why don't you debrief on that? Yeah, we, we've had the most progress, I think, in uh, automotive and medical, so that's why we really highlighted them yesterday. So um, I basically showed the five-star cyber safety framework we published two years ago, and then gave kind of a progress report for how many and which parts of the automotive ecosystem have embraced it. So instead of showing a highly technical presentation, if you want to go look at this, I showed the kind of slides that are appropriate for being ambassadors into that community. We also, we glossed over who was on the, the, the midday panel with Nickerson, but th that was basically the head of cybersecurity for Philips Medical, the, um, um, one of the guys from NHTSA, which is the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration, the regulator equivalent of an FDA for cars. Um, we had Sasha from Exxon, um, uh, with an oil and gas perspective. And the goal there was to kind of show these are areas that are working, why they're working, and where the passion plus personal responsibility and ownership has really made a dent. So some of those examples came up again in the car, car place because we were able to show where the NHTSA was essentially not involved or where some of the automakers were in an adversarial relationship with researchers for some good reason. And now how you have uh, Tesla, Ford, and excuse me, not Ford, Tesla, GM, and FCA Chrysler of America, Fiat Chrysler of America have published coordinated vulnerability disclosure programs with a few others um, coming soon. So that was really a, a progress report of what's succeeded to date against the five-star cyber safety framework and the overall ecosystem. Yeah. And then we adjourned abruptly. Um, so Bo's overview of yesterday is not bad. I see some new faces, so I'm gonna show a few little framing things. The purpose of today is if yesterday emotionally was where we're, we've won and where we're winning in the first three years, today is really freaking hard problems that we don't know how to fix, really hard ones. And we wanna have the candor and the trust with each of you to speak very aggressively about some of these. Um, in the morning, we want to really tackle uncomfortable truths. And one of the things we've experienced is, uh, this is a great line, I think it was from one of the presidents, but the opposite of a profound truth is not a profound lie. It's, the, it's another profound truth. And most of our hard, intractable problems are where you have com 
competing profound truths that come into tension. And it, we can't be so polarizing as to say, well, my truth is more important than your truth because that perpetuates the stalemate. So one of the things we want to do is surface some profound truths that make this really, really hard. In fact, uh, one of the things I alluded to in the cyber safety framework for auto is star number three, which I'll show briefly in a minute, is evidence capture. We don't have any security logging or evidence capture in automobiles at all. And one of the reasons we don't is actually friends of ours that are privacy advocates have been so harsh on the automotive industry historically and on the government historically for good reasons that none of them are willing to get in that fight again. So there's really intractable problem where really good privacy goals are coming in attention with really important forensic and NTSB and accident investigation goals. So rather than us admiring the problem or being stuck for years, the, the goal of the cavalry is to be safer sooner, and we can only do that if we work together. And that means we really want to hear some of these. So I have some horror stories I'm going to share from the Health and Human Services Cybersecurity Task Force of how dangerous modern healthcare delivery organizations are. Um, and we don't know how to solve some of those problems. We're hoping to surface some on agricultural technology, which threatens parts of the global food supply. We hope to talk about some of the oil and gas issues if, if people are willing. And we're also going to shut the cameras off uh, so that we can have it, you know, at the, the moment someone wants to, so that we can have um, really important revelation in surfacing of ground truth. And the idea is later this afternoon, we'll take some of those ground truths, and if we have uncomfortable truths, they, re they necessitate uncomfortable solutions. So even though we kind of hate regulation, we kind of hate laws, and we kind of hate um, you know, lots of parts of society, when we have you know, cars that can kill people, or airlines that can fall out of the sky, or oil and gas pipelines that can explode, we have mandatory safety things. And now that bits and bytes are meeting flesh and blood, even if it's uncomfortable, we want to surface maybe some possible solutions to rise to these challenges. So um, with that, I think I'm going to show a few framing things, especially because there's some new faces. Um, and then I'd like to get into some uncomfortable truths, if that's OK. And if you have one, we want to hear it. So I'm terrified right now by clinical medical environments, agricultural technology, and some of the oil and gas stuff but maybe you've got an even worse one that we haven't heard of yet. So this is where we want to surface some of that stuff. Anything else?